All right, guys, so let's go ahead and answer this question three from the 2014 AP Calculus A, B, and B, C test. So the question says the function f is defined on the closed interval of negative 5 to 4, and the graph of f consists of three line segments as shown here. So this is our graph of f, and we have to consider that g is going to be defined by g of x equals the integral from negative 3 to x of f of t with respect to t. And now we can go ahead and dive into part a. Part a is finding us, or is asking us to find g of 3. So for this we're just going to have to plug in our value of 3 into our g of x function. So we have g of 3 equals the integral from negative 3 to 3. And then uh, this is going to be of our f of t dt. And if we go ahead and look at our, at our graph, negative 3 is found here, while positive 3 is found here. So we're going to have to use geometry. And we have this triangle right here. this whole triangle and this is represented by one half because we're using the area of a triangle formula one half of our base which is five units times our height two three four four units and then we're gonna have to add this triangle down here from our two to three from x is two to x is three so add, we're going to do 1 half times the base, which is 1, and then the height, which is actually negative 2 here. So we can further simplify. 1 half times 20 plus 1 half times negative 2. And then we see that we have 10 plus a negative 1 and we know that this equals 9 so our g of 3 equals 9 and that's how you answer part A now we can go ahead and move on to part B alright so part B is saying on what open intervals contained when x is between negative 5 and 4 is the graph of g both increasing and concave down Give a reason for your answer. All right, so we're on part B, and our interval is from negative 5 to 4. So now we have to look for whenever g is both increasing and concave down. So g increasing and g concave down. All right, so using the graph of f, we know that g is going to be increasing whenever f is positive. g is increasing, f is positive. And then it's going to be concave down whenever the graph of f's slope is decreasing. Yes, whenever the graph of f slope is decreasing. So f slope decrease. All right, so now we can go ahead and classify our intervals that satisfy these, the f is positive and the slope is decreasing. For this, not the slope is decreasing, the slope is negative. My bad there. So when the f the graph of f is positive for the intervals of negative five to negative three, and then it remains positive from negative three to zero, and then it continues to be positive from zero to two, and then it just goes into the negative region of the graph. 
and then the slope is negative on the intervals of negative 5 to 3 as we can see there the slope is negative and then it's also negative from 0 to 4 0 to 4 and now we can go ahead and um, pick out our values of x, the intervals of x that satisfy both conditions. So we can see that the negative 5 to negative 3 is in both. And then we also have the 0 to 2. And here we have 0 to 4, but we can go ahead and condense this to 0 to 2. And for that we can conclude and answer this problem. The graph of g is both increasing and concave down when on the interval of negative 5 to 3 and when x is between 0 and 2. And now we have to go ahead and give a reason for our answer. Oops. And that is because these intervals is when it's when the graph of f or g prime is both positive and decreasing. Let's go ahead and finish writing this up. That's our final answer for part B. And then we could go ahead and move on to part C. So part C is saying the function h is defined by h of x equals g of x over quantity of 5x. And it's asking us to find h prime of 3. So we're given in part C, we're given a new function. And it is h of x, which is g of x over 5x. And then it's asking us to find h prime of 3. So to, to even get to this point, we have to find the function of our h prime of x. So for this, h prime of x, we have to find the derivative of this function right here, the g of x over 5x. And for this, we have to use our quotient rule, the low d high minus high d low over low low. And we can see that our low function is 5x. And our high function is g of x. So we have 5x times g prime of x, low d high, minus g of x, times the derivative of our lower function, which is just going to be 5. And this is all over low low, which is just going to be our 5x squared. And then once we get here, we can go ahead and plug in our value of 3 for x. So we have 5 times 3 times g prime of 3. And keep plugging these in. And then we're just going to expand this low low. So it's 25 of x squared because we're distributing the square. And we have 25 times 3 squared, which is 9. If we further simplify this, it's 15 times our g prime of 3 value is going to be negative 2. And then we have g of 3, which is given by 5. And then we have, no, g of 3 is going to be given by 9, because that's what we answered for in part A. So we have that, and then we have to multiply that by 5. It's going to be all over 225. Further simplify. 
we are eventually going to get to our answer negative 75 over 225 which can be simplified to negative one-third and that's part C of question 3 and we can go ahead and move on to part D so part D is saying the function P is defined by P of X equals F of X squared minus X find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of P at the point where x equals negative 1. So this is giving us a lot of information, we just have to break it down. And d is introducing to us another function, it's the function of p. So it says p of x equals f of x squared minus x. And then we have to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of p. So for that we have to find p prime of x and then the value of x that it's giving us is x equals negative 1. Alright, so to find p prime of x we are going to have to find the derivative of f of x squared minus x and to do that we have to be familiarized with the composition of functions so we can say f of x equals f of x squared minus x and then x squared minus x equals our g of x so p of x dismissing the values of x here we just have f of g of x and to find the derivative of this we have to do f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Alright, so now that we have that in our mind, we can go ahead and resort back to our x squared minus x. So we have f prime of x squared minus x times the derivative of this function up here, which is going to be 2x minus 1 and if we go ahead and plug in our value of negative 1 that's given for x we have p prime of negative 1 equals f prime of negative 1 squared minus a negative 1 times 2 times negative 1 minus 1 and we have f prime of 1 plus 1 times negative 2 minus 1 and then we have f prime of 2 then here we can see that our value of f prime is going to be given on this interval because f on the interval from 0 to 4 equals negative 2x plus 4. So that means that our f prime here is just going to equal negative 2. And we have to multiply this by negative 3. So here we have negative 2 times a negative 3. And for that, we can conclude with our p prime of negative 1 value equal to 6. And now we have completed all of this question 3 from the 2014 AP Calculus AB test.